Hello YouTube, this is Darkon633 and unfortunately I do have a little bit of a cold so my voice is going to be kind of crackling throughout the majority of this video but bear with me as we quickly just go through this video. Anyways, this is another installment on my Dark Onslaught Retro Reviews and this time I'll be taking a look at the Star Wars the original trilogy X-Wing Fighter. Now this version of the X-Wing is supposedly based on the power of the force to X-Wing, but the electronics have been scrapped out and it's pretty much just the shell of what it used to be. Because this thing is used, a lot of the parts are kind of warped. It is have quite a bit of wear and there's a couple of stress marks on the cannons which we'll get to in a minute. The set supposedly came with this version of Luke. I'm not too familiar with the set personally since I never actually saw it on my own in stores, but as you can see, this figure has the typical five points of articulation, so it's not a whole lot to expect in this one. However, thanks to my friend Sound.12, I managed to get a hold of the Saga collection version of Luke, so he looks a lot better and works a lot better for the X Wing, which we'll get to in a minute. I also have the RDD2 from the Force Awakens 2 pack with with uh, C-3PO. Here's well just for a comparison. Since obviously the one, the main unit of our duty 2 is molded on the X-Wing itself. But anyways, we'll take a look at the Luke quickly first. As you can see, he does have a really nice look at Mark Hamill's face here. It's not the best I can say, but it's still pretty good for what it is. What's cool is that the helmet is indeed removable but I already removed it prior to putting it in this video, so that's what you get there. He also comes with the blaster, along with a lightsaber, which I put over here. So that looks really nice there. And another unsheathed, or just the hilt of the lightsaber, on his belt there. Articulation-wise is that his head is on a ball joint, which allows a great deal of movement with no hindrance even with the helmet on so that's good it's a bit off place but well he does have ball hinged shoulders which allows outward movement really nicely and forward and backwards he has swivels on his elbows in two areas so he's got a swivel up on his elbow and on his wrist so that's really nice he does have a single jointed elbow he has the full waist articulation can go back and forth and spin around. He doesn't have outwards hip movement, but does have good movement, so backwards on the hips. And fortunately, it looks like he does not have... Oh, wait, no, he does. He does have knee joints, but they're really tight, so I don't want to move too much on them. And he does have swivels at the boot, so that's really nice. As well as feet pivot just a bit, so it's pretty good. What we're going to do next is just take off the blaster, since unfortunately there isn't a way to store it anywhere on his body. But we're going to put him in a sitting position, so that we can put him inside the X-Wing itself. We'll now open the X-Wing. And he does fit in pretty well, but you kind of need to position him in a funny way just to get him inside. But he does work really nicely with this version of the X-Wing. See, it does fully close with him inside. And it's a lot better scale, personally, than the one that came with this, since this one is extremely small. Anyways, looking at the x book itself, as you can see, it's got a lot of wear and tear just by design, and that looks really nice by the way that Hasbro designed it back in 2004 when this thing was released. And it does have a really nice look of the X-Wing. The original version had a battery compartment here, but it's obviously all scrapped, as mentioned earlier. And he does ha have a landing gear piece, which is really nice. Now, unfortunately, since this thing is pretty old, the one I got isn't in the best condition. And the reason I say that is because the unit doesn't really work, unfortunately. What it's supposed to do is when you press our duty 2 down, the star foils will open up and it would stay in place. But just to show here, here is the major problem with the X-Wing. At least it's my version of it anyways. Get into the camera there, and then, so you can see, that's all it can do, which is really annoying. So what I like to do, just to keep it in place, 
while it looks really ugly at times, I'm just going to put these two rubber band pieces, which I've been using. It has something to do with the inner spring of the R2-D2 unit isn't in the best condition. It doesn't really match it. And here's how it would technically look like if it worked properly, even with the rubber bands there. So we're going to remove the rubber bands, temporarily, just to show what happens when you pull this little switch. Basically what this thing's supposed to do is when you pull it back, it locks the star foils back into place. So as you can see, just to show a comparison there, that's pretty much what it's supposed to do. So that is a bit unfortunate that mine doesn't really like to work properly. I already tried opening it up and looked inside, but I haven't really found a way to fix it. So that's a bit of a nuisance. We're just going to leave it open like this. And just to show it in display here, with the line of gear down, here's how the X-Wing looks like on my other face fully opened. So that looks really nice. What's also cool is if you have Darth Vader's TIE Fighter or any of the other TIE Fighters, so we're just going to bring out Darth Vader's. Since it is the Power of the Force mold mostly, it is in scale with the version of the TIE Fighter. So that's really nice and I think Casper did an amazing job creating this version of the X-Wing. Now while this X-Wing is definitely not the most impressive mold of the X-Wing, it's definitely not the most definitive version. I still think this is a really nice version, especially if you want one that opens up. There is another version of the X-Wing which is about the same scale, but unfortunately, even though it's slightly better detail from what I've seen, and it can have a targeting computer, it's the figure itself is molded inside, so that is a bit of a distraction point. So, if you want an X-Wing, that's pretty good. And while it might not be the best X-Wing, since this one goes for a decent price compared to the other X-Wings, especially the Dagobah set one, that one goes for a lot of money. So, for a budgetary X-Wing, I think this is a pretty decent one, and I highly recommend picking this up, especially if you're really not a fan of the new X-Wing. I've yet to pick up the Force Awakens one, since it gets a lot of flack for having problems with the rubbery pieces on the nose cone and also the cannons. But one day I might pick up the blue one just for the sake of at least having a vehicle that's going to be featured in The Force Awakens that is an X-Wings. But other than that, I still think this is a better X-Wing overall and hopefully if you get an X-Wing you'll be in a better condition than mine. So anyways, that's it for this week for the Dark Onslaught Retron review. And next week I'll be bringing Actually, one of the first retro vehicles I got during the Vintage Toy Line. Not the original Vintage, but the Vintage Collection release, when it was released in Target. You'll see next week. But for now, please comment and subscribe, and check out Hirotako and the Gideon blog as soon as they reopen. Please check my Twitter handle under Darkon633. And also, please check down the other channels up below, including the WWE Podcast and more. But for now, I'll be seeing you too, and may the Force be with you. Bye.